Hey guys, my name is Jamin. Thank you for visiting my YouTube channel where I try to bring you a wide variety of computer operation and upgrade videos. In this video guys, I'm working on an ROG gaming computer that when you're trying to start it, it's not booting up to Windows, it's getting stuck at a no hard drive error. Uh, hard drive not found, hard drive not installed, any error like that where it can't find your hard drive, it can't progress, you're stuck. I'll show you how to fix that in this video. As always guys, please remember to like and share if this video is helpful, if you think it can help someone else out. Uh, please subscribe if you enjoy do-it-yourself computer repair. And for those of you that want to support the channel a little further and leave a small donation, I'll show you a couple ways you can do that at the end of the video. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get into the project. So just to introduce you to these troubleshooting steps, guys, it's important for you to know what we're troubleshooting and why. There are three main causes for this issue that we're looking at. Either a BIOS issue, we're going to change some settings, fool around in BIOS a little bit, see if something there is wrong. Uh, two is a hardware issue, usually your hard drive. And three is an operating system issue. These are the reasons why usually this issue is happening. Now the order that I take you through these tests and these troubleshooting steps may not be the order that you want to go through them based on your computer or what you think is happening. You know what's happening with your computer better than I do. Keep in mind that if I show you how to maybe test the hard drive first or play with some BIOS issues first, if I show you those troubleshooting steps first, but you know that directly before this issue started, you had a Windows update. And while your computer was updating, it crashed and it reloaded. From that information, you may wanna start with the operating system troubleshooting steps first and not the hardware or, or BIOS. So again, the order that I'm showing you these steps may not be the order you want to do them. Uh, use some common sense as far as what happened with you so you don't waste time. If you have any questions, let me know and I can help you out. So to start troubleshooting some hardware issues, I'm gonna have you start with the easiest that it could be. Uh, this may help 10, 15% of you. What could be happening is your external devices are distracting from your computer booting off of your hard drive. So what I'm gonna have you do is make sure your computer is off and unplug all your external devices, an external hard drive for storage, your external mouse, your external keyboard, anything that plugs into the computer other than your power adapter, unplug it, give it a couple seconds, and try starting your computer. If you're one of the 10, 15% that this helps, leave me a message, good for you. Um, what could be happening again is your computer is trying to boot off of these items and not your hard drive. If that's the case, go into BIOS at startup and make sure in your boot order or your boot priority order or whatever your BIOS calls it, make sure your hard drive is set to number one and not just a random USB drive. That should eliminate your computer going elsewhere before it goes to your hard drive. And if your hard drive is listed as first, it'll go there first every time the computer starts. If this does not work for you, we'll go to the more likely hardware issue if it is a hardware issue and that's your hard drive. So sometimes your hard drive can actually just come loose. Either the computer is hit or it comes loose because it's not tightened in there enough, but for whatever reason they do, RAM, hard drives, internal components do just come loose. So what we're gonna do is gonna go inside your computer and do what's called reseeding your hard drive. It's where you unplug it, you plug it back in, make sure it's secure, tighten it down with the screws, make sure the caddy's not cockeyed, and I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so as you can see, my ASUS ROG computer is sitting on an anti-static pad. Guys, either an anti-static pad or an anti-static bracelet is a great idea to use when working on the inside of your computer to avoid damaging anything with any sort of static that comes off of your body. If you guys would like any suggestions on items that I use in my shop, any tools or supplies, I'll have a link up here to my Amazon store where you can see things that I've used that I think you'd like. On my Amazon store, there are several sections here. Repair tools is one of them. Uh, here you can find common hand tools that I use, along with things like anti-static mats and bracelets that help prevent you from damaging your computer. Your model computer may not be the exact one I'm using. If you need help getting into yours, leave me a comment, I can help you. But just for sake of an example, I'm using this one. I have an easy access panel here, which many of you should have. And all I have to do is put my little pry tool in there, pop that up, and there's a screw that becomes seen right there. Take my screwdriver, come over here, we'll work that screw out. All right, then we'll pull off this panel. And there's my hard drives. Now with most computers, you'll either have one or two hard drives, there's your RAM. And to reseat this, we're gonna unplug it and plug it back in, make sure that it's secure. So I'm only gonna do it with one to show you how to do it. 
But as you can see, the hard drive, it's inside a caddy, and this caddy is screwed to the computer. I'm gonna unscrew this caddy real quick. And then I'm gonna grab this black tab, I'm gonna pull it away from the port and take it out. Just like that. Now that I have my hard drive out, I'm just gonna inspect in there, make sure it's not dirty, give this a nice light blow. Not enough to get any moisture in there. Make sure that it's dry. And then I'm gonna set it in here nice and snug. And I'm gonna give it a good, um, not too hard, you don't wanna damage anything, but a good forceful push right into that port. Get it right in there, nice and snug. And as you can see here, there's a gap there. In a lot of computers, they should have a little piece of foam that really gets in there and squishes that hard drive over. But I don't have one in here. Um, if you're concerned with it being loose, in, invest in that. Get something that can squish in there and really push that hard drive over. But after it's all the way over, I'm pretty confident now that it's not loose. I'm gonna go ahead and put my screws back in, making sure that I'm holding this flush while I'm doing it and get these screws nice and tight. That's what we call reseeding a hard drive, unplugging it, plugging it back, making sure that it's secure. So hopefully this helps another 10% of you. Uh, if not, there's one more thing that some of you will be able to do with your computers to test your hard drive. Some of you will be able to go into BIOS by hitting F2 at startup. If it's not F2, try F1, uh, escape, or the other function keys. Some models have different keys they use. But in BIOS, you may be able to find a diagnostic or a hardware diagnostic scan or test Run that if you have that ability, and that can tell you if your hard drive, if it can see your hard drive, that'll tell you if your hard drive is healthy or not. If it fails the test, you know to replace your hard drive. If it passes the test, you know you probably don't have a hardware issue. If it can't see your hard drive, try reseeding it like we just did here if you haven't already. But if you reseed it and the hardware scan is still saying it can't see the hard drive, that's the same as it being bad. I would replace it. Those are most of the troubleshooting steps for troubleshooting a hardware or hard drive issue. If it's not that and that's not fixing your problem, we'll move on and start troubleshooting something else. So to start troubleshooting any BIOS issues, I'm going to load the computer up, take you into BIOS, and show you some different things you can try changing and adjusting to make sure it's not just a BIOS issue that's stopping you from starting your computer. Okay, so to get in BIOS on your computer, I'm going to hit my power button and start tapping on my F2 key. If F2 does not work, try F1. Uh, if that doesn't work, try Escape. If none of those work, try the other function keys. Some models, unfortunately, use different keys, but for most of you and me, it's gonna be F2. So, power button, start tapping on F2 right away. And there I am inside BIOS. So before getting into BIOS, just to shout out real quick, guys, there will always be a way to navigate BIOS, either with your tab keys or your arrow keys. Um, you just have to find the right keys to navigate BIOS. If none of your keys seem to work, try using an external keyboard. And that goes for your mouse as well. Some of you may have use of your mouse in your BIOS. Some of you won't. If you don't, try an external USB mouse. Uh, but there will always be a way to navigate BIOS. You just have to find the right key for your computer. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to have you check is right here your system date and system time settings. It's usually on the first tab right when BIOS opens. If not, scan down through your tabs uh, with your arrow keys or your tab keys or whatever um, until you find system date and system time. Believe it or not, if your date and time is wrong, um, that can screw up how BIOS runs. And since BIOS is your base system that has to load and run well before loading Windows, it could stop Windows from loading simply because your date and time is off. So first of all, make sure your system date and time is accurate to where you are. Um, if you don't have to change your system date and time, if it's accurate, we'll move on. Uh, we'll do the next step in BIOS. If it is wrong, change it. Save and exit, again, my key down here says F10, save and exit. You should be able, um, sometimes yours is down here, uh, but you'll be able to find out where. Save and exit, uh, restart your computer. If that fixes your problem, great. If it doesn't, come back in here, check BIOS again. If your date and time settings are still wrong and, and it didn't save from when you just changed it, that could mean that your CMOS battery is dead. Um, that's the component that's supposed to keep power to your motherboard and BIOS 
even when the computer is off to maintain these settings. If the settings are not being kept after every shutdown, um, your BIOS may be losing power, resetting all, all the settings, and that's why you're having this issue. So if you have to change your date and time every time, replace your CMOS battery. Okay, so now assuming that's not your issue, we're gonna move on and check some other things in BIOS uh, that you can change to hopefully resolve the issue if it is BIOS related. So the next thing I'm gonna show you in BIOS, I'm gonna use my arrow keys. I'm gonna come over to the boot tab. Um, again, if you have a boot tab, these options should be here. If you don't have a boot tab, check the other ones, look around, you should still be able to find these options that I'm gonna show you. On the top left corner, you'll see launch CSM. Uh, if you don't see CSM, you may see UEFI. They're generally considered the same thing. Um, you may also see the opposite, which is legacy. So you'll either see on the one hand legacy or CSM UEFI. They're different options you can choose in how your computer starts up. If you see CSM like I do, or if you see UEFI, try changing it to legacy. And the opposite is also true. If you guys see legacy, try changing it to either UEFI or CSM, whichever one you can see. So the way that I would change that, I would use my arrow keys down here. It's disabled. I would hit enter. I would enable it, which is taking it off of legacy. So again, it's going to be different for different BIOS versions. Some of you may have a drop down menu that you'll select with your mouse to choose which one. Some of you will hit enter. There's different ways that you're gonna be able to change this. Find the way that works for you. Leave me a message if you need help. But again, to summarize, if you see legacy, change it to CSM or UEFI. If you see UEFI or CSM, change it to legacy. Then you would save and exit, try booting your computer up. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna have you guys check in BIOS, and this applies especially for you guys that had some sort of Windows or operating system error, um, or maybe your computer was processing an update, and then your computer crashes, reboots, and you're seeing this problem. So especially for you guys, search through the tabs in your BIOS. Uh, try to find any options that say restore uh, or repair or uh, more importantly, uninstall, last update, anything like that. Uh, again, especially for you guys that think you may be looking at an operating system problem. Try to find options like that to repair the operating system, restore it, or uninstall, last update. Um, again, it's different in everyone's BIOS. You may have to look around. If you need help, leave me a message. But that's the last thing I'll have you try in BIOS, is trying to do that, assuming that it could be an operating system issue. Assuming that didn't work, we've kind of ruled out most of the things that it could be in BIOS. We'll move on now to troubleshoot something else. Okay, so now to start working and troubleshooting on your operating system. Um, we've already kind of done a couple steps that could give us some clues about the operating system. Those of you that may have been able to run your hardware or your hard drive diagnostic test, if that scan passed your hard drive and your hard drive showed us healthy, maybe we know that it could be an operating system issue if your hard drive is okay. Uh, so that's one clue. Also, those of you in BIOS, if when you were testing BIOS, you found the restore or repair options, um, uninstall last update options, if you tried those and those had no success, then again, we're kind of ruling out everything than an operating system. Um, but those of you who couldn't run your hard drive scan, those of you who couldn't find those options in BIOS to restore or repair, um, we're left with the operating system now that we're going to troubleshoot and then that way we'll know about the other things as well. So now we're going to go ahead and try to install an operating system from scratch. There'll be links below in the description on how to install Windows 10. Um, there'll also be a link on how to install Windows 11 uh, that'll walk you through how to install that in this brand computer. Assuming there's no hardware or hard drive issues, assuming BIOS is okay, the new install of Windows should be successful. You should be all set at, at this point. If the new install fails, leave me a message. Let me know what sort of error message you're seeing. But I'm guessing that if your install fails, you were not able to run the hard drive scan. Um, if your install fails, most likely your hard drive's bad. I would then replace it at, at that point. So I hope this video helped you guys out. Again, if you need any help, check out the FAQs in the description below first. That could save you some time getting an answer. If you do need to leave me a question or comment, I do try to check those a couple times a day at least. 
Thank you so much for watching, guys. I look forward to seeing you on my next video. And for those of you that wanted to support the channel a little further and leave a small donation, I'll show you a couple ways you can do that now. First, right below the video to the right hand side, you'll see the super thanks button. You can click on that. You can select a tip amount here. Second way, you can use your cash app. Find me at dollar sign PC helper. You can leave a dollar amount and you can even leave a little note.